I am scrolling it up. I'm scrolling it up. All right. I think we're live now. Hopefully, if I didn't just screw it up again. <laughs> Happy St. Patty's Day. Woo! Look at the Irish to you. They're always after me. Lucky charms. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our Success Mastermind for Thursday, the 17th of March, 2022. John Lavinia here with you. My goodness. Um, wow. I've got, I've got some stuff. I've got some stuff coming up today that I want to share with you all, which I think you will find empowering. Um, you damn well better, right? Hey, guess what we got today? We got Life and Business Tools with Adrian Garner coming up at 4.30 p.m. Eastern U.S. time, 4.30 p.m. Eastern U.S. daylight time. Life and Business Tools with Adrian Garner. So tune in. To, is he Irish? I think we're all Irish today, aren't we? Oh, he's, he's British, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he looks British. Yeah. Anyway, uh, who else is Irish here? We have, uh, actually, we got some, we got a lot of friends in, in Dublin and Belfast. And uh, yeah, so happy pa St. Patty's Day. Um, I just got back from the store where my wife and I bought the obligatory corned beef, cabbage, carrots and a box of lucky charms we never feed our daughter that crap but we're like you know what it's saint patrick's day have a box of lucky charms she's all happy she's excited she gets to eat crap so uh, hey gail good to see you um <clears throat> here's what's coming up for me today i was listening to listen to this guys i was listening to this lecture from a guy who i've learned a lot from um he's an expert in the um direct selling, the direct sell space. And uh, he was talking about some of the, the principles or laws of prosperity. Now, I know, I know a lot of us have uh, just been through James Allen's classic book. I think it's a classic now that I finally read it, uh, which is the um, uh, Eight Pillars of Prosperity, right? And so I'm listening to this guy talk. His name is Randy. I'm listening to him talk about, you know, all these different aspects where you could you know apply thought to actually becoming prosperous and one of the things he talked about uh which sounds pretty far out is clairvoyance so being able to you know see the future that kind of stuff and uh he made the argument that you know actually we all can to whatever degree we're tuned in we're talking about the quality of thought and yet it's not it's not something you can force now, Napoleon Hill, in his, his uh, Think and Grow Rich, he talked about the 13 principles of success for the top successful people and blah, blah, blah. The, the 13th one was the sixth sense, the hunch, the intuition. And, and that, could, that could be seen as, um, you know, where you just make spontaneous right action because you can think, you know what? I, I predict that's going to be the right move with that hunch. I've, I've got an idea. Right. Or, and we can get into other things like, you know, uh, tell a, I'm sorry, who is blowing up the phone in my pocket? Um, telepathy, right. And other various forms of extrasensory perception. But that's, that's basically what he's talking about here with the idea of having an intuitive knowingness that this is what's going to happen. And so uh, he tried this or he noticed this, that he, um, he was at this big convention in this major, you know, skyscraper building where they had banks of elevators and these elevators go to those floors and those elevators go to those floors, like huge skyscraper. And, um, and he noticed that he was going from meeting to meeting convention, this sessions in that room, that sessions in that room and between sessions, you got to go to the different room. And so he would click the button on, on this bank of elevators and stand in front of one of the doors. And every time the door he was standing in front of is the one that opened. Could have been any of them. And then he started thinking about it. He's like, wow, this is pretty cool. All right, I'm going to predict. So now he's, now he's getting all consciously aware of this, right? So now I'm going to predict which door it's going to be. And he was wrong every friggin' time. Wrong, 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 wrong. And then he, you know, went about his day and forgot about the little game he was playing with himself. And then again, he just kept standing in front of the right door. How fortuitous, how lucky. 
Now, we all know the saying that successful people are lucky. Just ask any failure. <laughs> so what was happening with this guy? And he also commented, he said, I'm able to do this in uh, the, the condo, the building he lives in, the high rise. I'm able to do this because I've got good energy and I, you know, I feel good. And I mean, I love my condo and I'm relaxed and at peace and having fun. And, you know, and I can, I can stand in front of the right door again and again, but in the office building where I argue with the landlord and the guy, right. I never stand in front of the right door. Now this is a trivial little thing. Which of the elevator doors are going to be the one that opens first. Okay. But we're talking about, you know, basically predicting the future. And, and what a lot of people would call luck. So what, what is it that, well, I'm going to give you my take on this. Okay. But what would cause you or this guy who was talking to me or myself, what would cause us to be more or less clairvoyant, lucky, intuitive? It comes down to, I think, the the ability to um, surrender any, any like forcefulness. Like now I'm trying. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. So look, as soon as we say, I'm going to try, or I want, or I'm going to, I'm going to work hard on this. Then what we're saying is we don't have it, but the subtlety of the communication. All right. So think about, all right. If, if we, if we got into like quantum physics and stuff or quantum field theory, Okay, that there is stuff. Okay, so here's this stuff. This is, we call this an iPhone, and this is ostensibly, this is hard matter. This is solid. I can touch it. It is real matter. Okay, but what we can uh, also find is that at the quantum level, at the subatomic level, uh, there are particles, and then there is space in between the particles. And in fact, there is more space in between the particles than there are particles themselves. Relatively speaking, if you took, you know, one atom of plastic here and one atom, you know, here, okay, the space in between them, proportionately speaking, is further than the distance from the earth to the moon. So proportionately speaking, right, there's more space in between these atoms inside this hard matter than there is between the earth and the moon when you take it to scale and then break it down even further we can see that even those particles uh, appear as particles based on the uh, our own quality of attention to the potentiality for a particle and again i'm not going to confuse you with all this i probably already am but you could study all this this kind of stuff where you get into quantum field theory and stuff like this but 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 essentially all it is is the, the potentiality for a particle a wavelength, a, a, um, a frequency, sound, basically. And here are all these different frequencies, right? And some of them uh, have slowed down so slow that they, they appear as hard matter, particles. And uh, some of them, of course, are so fast that, you know, it's beyond perception. Or is it? Or is it? So, so when we're talking about communication, we're talking about communicating with, let's say, the field of all knowingness, right? Omniscience, supreme consciousness. Is it because you're thinking with your slow ass brain that has to figure stuff out and argue with itself and have all these considerations? Is that how you get that communication? Is that the frequency of clairvoyance, telepathy, whatever? No, it's not the frequency, wrong frequency. Okay. So, so I can, with, with the perceptics that I use on a daily basis, I can perceive visually, auditorily, uh, you know, tactfully, I, I can, I can perceive matter. Okay. On the frequency of physicality, let's say, but there are subtler communications, which I may or may not tune into. Now, the idea with all this that, that came up for me today was, well, when I'm relaxed and at peace and having fun, in other words, I'm in a, having an easy flowing experience. I'm not encumbered. I'm not trying. I'm not striving. And oh my goodness, right? When I'm, when I'm experiencing that emotionally and who I'm being is, is that, well, I'm much more perceptive. 
of the subtler things, right? Think of the difference between, you know, here's, here's the, you know, the scalpel versus the ax, right? And a lot of people go through life all, the, all day, all night, 24 hours a day with the ax. And there's a time for an ax, right? Here's stuff, right? Meat, wood, right? So, so yeah, yeah, we got, got an ax, okay? But now we're talking about getting down into the microscopic here. The ax doesn't work. So my idea here, and, and what I'm uh, thinking that you could do to, to get lucky, if you want to be more lucky or more clairvoyant or more predictive and, and you know, dazzle your friends, <laughs> dazzle your friends with your ability to stand in front of the correct elevator door or other, you know, inconsequential stuff, but also consequential stuff. Well, then you got to get out of your own way. As soon as this guy got in his own way with all his thinkingness about it, I can't hear it. I can't hear it. He was even trying to hear the elevator. I mean, I think I hear the, the cables going in that one. I think it's going to be that door over there. So now, now he's using grosser, lower level communications, right? Ears, you know, so, I mean, it's good and right and valid. Do the ear thing. Okay. But, but the communication that he got when he wasn't forcing was on a completely different level, which you, you can't force. You can't force it. We just got to get out of our own way. So I had this, how does this relate to, to what we do with, with daily life? Well, you can see lots of ways, but I can tell you just in business, um, I have, um, and just yesterday, just yesterday, I had two people reach out, reach back out to me who I reached out to. These are people who are uh, influencers in like the social media and online um, you know, space. And, uh, and I reached out to them, showing them, you know, some of the stuff that I'm doing with this, uh, you know, Lindsay knows, right? U.S. manufacturing, Catherine knows. We got online shopping clubs, e-commerce going on. I think this would be a great fit for your audience. Can we meet on Zoom? Anyway, I had one of them hit me right back. Yeah, let's meet. Enrolled them in like 40 minutes. Done. Okay. He's ready to start promoting. He's ready to start, you know, gathering up a, a crew and let's, let's get this stuff to market. So the day prior, I was not in, in that good of a mood. I was um, having a challenging time. But anyway, reached out to, to uh, five such people, influencers, for whatever that's worth. Um, and, and I got no response from anybody. So I used the same words with all of them. I reached out the same way to all of them. Now, not a very big sample size, John. Eh, what are you talking about? 10 people you contacted? Tell me when you got a thousand people that, that you've contacted. Now we can look at the data. Okay, that's very cerebral. And, and I like statistics. That's cool. I'm just telling you what, what just happened. All I did was say, you know what? I, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to reach. I'm not attached to the outcome, like whatever, whatever, right? And when and when my friend Randy wasn't attached to whether or not he was right or even thinking about being right with which elevator is going to open, he was right every time. Because it wasn't him, you know, the, the meat puppet guy. It wasn't him trying to be right. It was the subtler, higher intelligence stuff, which again, we can't force. So sometimes we just got to put down the ax. Anybody ever see um, the movie Playing with Fire? It's a fairly recent comedy. Guys, watch this movie. It is hilarious. It is, um, it's about these guys. They're firemen. They're special, specialty firemen called smoke jumpers. And they jump out of helicopters and, you know, go into the fire and save the people. And, and, uh, but it's this hilarious comedy. The main guy who stars in it was a pro wrestler, John Cena, I think is his name. Yes. And uh, anyway, they rescue these kids and this whole, this whole uh, drama ensues and the kids are hilarious. One of the best movies I've seen in I don't know how long. Um, yeah, Playing With Fire. I've watched it like five times with my daughter. It came out, I think, two years ago. There's a little girl in there and, and she is the cutest little girl. But anyway, go watch Playing With Fire. But there's this one character in, in, the, in the movie 
they call they call him Axe, and it's this huge lumberjack looking dude, skinhead, big beard, muscles, right? He's got to be like six foot five, and uh, and he, everywhere he goes, he's got an axe. He's always ready to like chop something down, and. Uh, <laughs> It was until the end of the movie he finally puts down the axe. <sighs> I won't tell you. I won't tell you. The, it, just watch the movie. It's, you're going to laugh your ass off. Um, <laughs> but but it, uh, sadly, you haven't all seen the movie, so you don't. You can't picture, you know, this comical character, this guy Axe, who never says anything and just carries an axe all the time. He's this big lumberjack dude who doesn't talk. Um, but uh, but uh, if, if that's how we're going through life, if you could just kind of picture that, here's you going through life with your axe, chopping stuff down, or at least intending to, and, uh, and not even communicating. Communicating with the tree, I suppose. Here's the, the tree on fire. Here's the axe. You're communicating with the tree to chop it down. Okay, but, but just going through life, not actually communicating with the subtler um, potentialities. Just being stuck on this frequency with your ax. And that's what I do most of, most of my days, right? Most of my days. And look, this is the value of, of quiet time, right? Especially when I'm getting sideways, like I was a couple of days ago, where, where my, my promotions were falling on deaf ears. Same words, different guy. Let's go ahead and get quiet. Let's go ahead and remember who's, who's cause in all this. Who's cause? Oh, I'm cause. That's right, I'm cause. So I don't have to be all concerned with these circumstances and everything. Get all frantic. Force, force, force. No, you don't have You can. You don't have to. Okay, well, I got choices now. I guess I am cause. I got choices. Well, why don't I just relax a little bit then? I mean, if they're real problems, they'll still be there later, right? So let me just go ahead and get quiet and stop thinking so much. And just look, just look at the thoughts, right? So rather than me, rather than me trying to force solutions, right? Let me look at the thoughts that I'm thinking need to need to be forced or something. And now I'm at least the observer of that. And I could be a bit more objective and not just so in it, in it, right? Trying to pick the right elevator door. I can get out of the way. I can get out of the way, the I, the, the small I, and let the big I, right, the, the true self, the higher self, do the thing, rather than blocking, blocking, blocking. As you're hearing this, you, you may think, wow, I mean, this is, uh, you know, it's pretty lofty, man, you know, so... Are there tools in here that I can use? I, I guess I guess the tool is to to find ways to be in a higher emotional state, a higher vibration, so to speak. To the point where, and you've all done this, you've all done this, where intuitively, spontaneous right action or telepathically, right? Here's I'm thinking of my mom. Next thing you know, the phone rings. It's my mom. You've all experienced stuff like that. Okay, you weren't in the way. That's it. That's it. So, so I'm looking to operate at a at a higher frequency more often than than um, than I have. Okay, so this is all by degree. And I suppose yes, we could say that that we get to a point. You could get to a point where you're you know levitating and you know fish and loaves and whatever. I, I'm not there. Okay. We can also say, look, um, no need to condemn yourself for this. You're doing the, the planet Earth thing with the body and the brain. Okay, right. I mean, you, you got limitations with, with, with that stuff. I got it. I got it. It doesn't mean you're bad or wrong or anything. I'm just saying that there's a bigger, there's a bigger game afoot. There is. There's a bigger game. Maybe, maybe uh, play with it a little bit. It's a lighthearted thing. Okay. But look. We're talking about we're talking about luck or clairvoyance or you know pred predicting the future and, and stuff like this. Um, I think that's how you get lucky. 
you're in a higher emotional state. You're not so damn attached. You're not frantic. You're not concerned, right? And stuff like that. And then stuff starts clicking. And then people are always after your lucky charms because you're lucky, right? <laughs> you're lucky. <sighs> Am I making any sense? Is this, is this of use? I know we've got a very intimate crowd here today. Edward, Catherine, Gail, Lindsay, you have any thoughts on this? Have you experienced this or anything like it? Um, any comments on this? I'm going to have to... Uh, I have to start calling people out. My goodness. Lindsay, what are your comments on this? Let's hear from you because. I don't, yeah, I feel like we create our own look as well. Mm -hmm. And I've had the same things happen. I can contact people and maybe I'm frustrated with something, but, and it's still that, you know, and that's the same verbiage and then nothing, you know, cricket. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, you get a call back and it's like, wow you know it's just it just clicks something um uh, and you're right it's just it, different i don't believe in luck either but you can get out of your own way and then it, things do flow mm -hmm. and i don't know if it's we do you try to do something and you're going to be putting a lot more work into it than you probably should mm -hmm. that hard and I've, I've done that so many times so where I just make things 10 times harder than they should ever be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's, that's frustrating. Cause I know when I'm doing it and then I can't, I don't know. I have to like back up cause I don't know how to stop either. So I just have to like hit reset. <laughs> right. Right. When Randy <laughs> forgot about the whole game, he was running on himself with the elevator doors. Suddenly it worked again. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as he's not thinking about it. Right. Right. It's like, it's like the dog that you want to, I got this little chihuahua, right? And you go to, to pet him and he runs in the other direction, right? And then you turn around and go back to work and there he is scratching at your leg, right? That's right. So you can't force this. Yeah. So, yeah. It is like magnetic. It, it, yeah, it's polarizes it almost. You can't make yeah. it. <laughs> Let it grow. Yeah. That's a, a good talk. Good. Good. Keep that smile on your face. Great green shirt, by the way, Lindsay. You you wear it well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. I am wearing I'm wearing green today as well. Are you? Huh? Yeah. Look at that, huh? There you go. <laughs> Still in my gym clothes. Uh, <laughs> hey, at least I'm wearing something down there. Catherine, Edward, Gail, what do you guys think? <sighs> Catherine. I remember doing something similar. Um, actually, it was when I was a kid. My mom was like the only time I've ever been to the racetrack. Mm -hmm. And just for fun, we started, you know, placing bets. And like the first five or six, I was right every time. Mm. It was like only a couple of bucks. But then as soon as my mom was like, hey, let's actually try and do this. I couldn't pick a horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, right. It's totally weird. But yeah. Oh, same my idea. goodness. Get out of your own way. Right. Catherine, have you ever heard the term ignorance on fire? No. Okay. So this is the, this is how some people would describe the, the newbie new to whatever business, let's say. Okay. And they're all, you know, piss and vinegar. They're just excited. They don't understand like the tax sheets or the comp plan or nothing. They just, they're just like, ah, right. And they're sell, 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 sell. Right. And then they get cerebral about it. And now let's study the analytics and, uh, and down go their stats. Right. <laughs> so. So, yeah. Um, I and, and that's not an argument to, to, you know, stay ignorant. I mean, that's I would never um, be a proponent of that. Um, but stay green, stay enthusiastic, stay um, on fire whether you're ignorant or not. Okay. But we could see that demonstrated. And I have many times in, in like sales teams and stuff where the new guy, the rookie or the girl who's placing the bet, she doesn't even know what she's placing the bet on is the horse. Oh, okay. Horse, right. Here's the $2, which doesn't mean anything, $2. Right. But now that it means something, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, this is actually, you know what guys? Oh, 
We've talked about we've talked about uh, non-attachment quite a bit here. And by the way, Catherine, your stats are up. Your stats are up, girl. Okay, so so there was this book by Mark Douglas called Trading in the Zone. This was a book. It's kind of like the psychological bible for people in the trading space, like trading stocks and and investments and such. And uh, the whole premise of the book is to be non-attached. The whole premise is to be 100% objective and to basically not give a shit, right? So, so you have, you're putting on a trade. Here's, you're, you're risking, let's say $1,000, for example. Okay, well, do you need the $1,000? Is that like your bill money? Is that uh, like you're like desperate that you need to have a winning trade this time? Because look, any, any, a monkey could, could take the mouse and click the button to put on a trade. Go long, go short, right? There's two choices. So, and 50% and of the time they, they could be right, okay? So the question is, why are most traders not consistently right, consistently putting on winning trades? Because they get in their own way. Oh, I don't want to leave money on the table. Oh, fear of missing out. Oh, look at that. Oh, I know this goes, goes against my strategy, but I'm going to put that trade on anyway. Oh, right? So all the emotions of it gets in the way of the consistently successful trader or, or, or the most traders. The consistently successful trader is the one who they've got their strategy. They did their technical analysis. They put on the trade and then whatever happens, happens. And you can think of it like um, one of the examples he, he uses is uh, Las Vegas casinos, right? Why are Las Vegas casinos successful, right? If you've got something like... Um, you know, the, the poker tables, the blackjack, the one arm bandit, you know, the slot machines, right? How is it that they can consistently be successful? Because the odds are in their favor, something like two to three percent. So if you're consistently winning two to three percent of the time more than you're consistently losing, because the house loses money too, but just based on how the math is set up, they have to just by the law of averages, they have to win. So great, we just lost $100,000 on that card table. So what? We're going to wrap up the, you know, the month with, you know, $500 million just because of the numbers, just how they work out. Right? So relax. <clears throat> Does that make sense, guys? By the way, good book. Trading in the Zone, uh, especially if you're into trading or want to get into trading, you got to read that book. Um and I'll tell you, the time to get into trading is not when you need the money. That's <laughs> not the time to get into trading. So, because then it's all, you know, it's all this. <clears throat> Thank you, Catherine. Uh, anybody else? I see Edward and Gail here. You guys haven't gotten any words in yet. Would you like to? No? Okay. Well, then um, what we'll do is we'll wrap with that. Um, I am going to do my best to be live with Adrian at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I keep saying Eastern Daylight Time to, to, to drill it into my brain because we're on Daylight Time now. England isn't until next week. Australia is still on Daylight Time until first week of April. So just being very specific with my time zone designations. Anyway, love you guys. Make it an awesome day. Have some fun relax, right? Go find some lucky charms or something. And uh, <laughs> I'll see you guys real soon.